Welcome to this ThinApp Bootcamp series. In this session, we will discuss the use of scripts within ThinApp. To start, we will first discuss why this would be done and some common scenarios seen, followed by a ThinApp scripting overview. From there, we will dive into the ThinApp scripting architecture, including the callback functions, general script execution and timing, and then follow up with the ThinApp API calls. To start, why would someone use a script in general? Well, scripting allows for someone to create a customized, automated configuration or reconfiguration of the user's environment based upon some validation logic defined by the administrator. So why use a script within a ThinApp packaged application? Well, as an example, an administrator may want an application packaged within ThinApp and delivered in a quote-unquote vanilla or non-configured state. Rather than having the user attempt to manually configure the application on first use, the administrator can utilize a script within the ThinApp packaged application to automatically pre-configure that application for the user's specific environment based upon an, any number of validation checks, such as who they are, what the user's role is, where the user is logging in from, such as from the corporate network, their home, or maybe across a VPN connection, how the user is accessing the application, such as from a company desktop or laptop or some other personal system, when the user is connecting, and even why the user is needing the application, or any combination of the above validation checks. Some common scenarios where ThinApp scripting is seen utilized are, for example, when an administrator needs an application to be customized during launch, and these customizations need to occur based upon environment variables or conditions. More specifically, it is common where customers need to have a certain processes or services started and or stopped in a specific order, either inside the ThinApp package or natively on the workstation or both. Or a customer may need to have drives or printers mapped during execution of a specific app and unmapped after the ThinApp packaged app is closed. And finally, scripting within ThinApp can also accommodate the need to ensure the ThinApp packaged app is only executed on preferred or predefined systems, which may not be part of any Active Directory domain. Let's go over the basics of scripting within ThinApp. First and foremost, in order to utilize a VB script within ThinApp, one must place the VBS script file in the root of the ThinApp project, in the same folder as the build.bat file. This script will be loaded into the ThinApp virtual operating system and code from the script will be executed as necessary at execution and during the use of the ThinApp packaged application. Some items to keep in mind when utilizing scripting within ThinApp are only the VB scripting language is supported natively by ThinApp. Multiple VB script files can also be used within a single ThinApp packaged application However, this is not recommended simply because a single script is generally easier to maintain and utilize. One can utilize other scripting engines such as Kickstart, AutoIT, or even PowerShell. However, the scripting engine for the third-party script language must be loaded into the ThinApp package or natively on each PC where the ThinApp package will be executed, along with a means of utilizing the unsupported scripting language such as a VB script within the ThinApp package defined to execute the third-party script. And lastly, within the VB script, the use of WScript dotted commands are not fully supported. Reconfiguration of the WScript dotted command code may be necessary for ThinApp to properly handle the script. And finally, to review some general recommendations on scripting, it is best to organize your script into sections for easy maintenance and troubleshooting. Specific to ThinApp, you may wish to test your script code outside of ThinApp first so as to save time, and always ensure you are adding detailed comments to your scripts for the person who goes to edit the script after you. Moving into the callback functions, essentially ThinApp callback functions are timing mechanisms for an admin to script against. The first piece of the code which is executed in the script, however, is the code placed outside the ThinApp callback functions. This code is executed each time the script is called before any of the ThinApp callback functions. A good example of what is usually found at this point in the script is code of benefit to the rest of the script, such as variable declarations and global settings. The first callback function is on first sandbox owner. This function is called only once when the first entry point of a ThinApp packaged application is executed. This callback function is executed prior to an entry point's defined process being launched. 
it is not called for the execution of any other entry point or any child process of the same Thinet package while any part of the Thinet package remains running. An example scenario of when this callback function is executed would be a user who has no applications running and then launches Microsoft Outlook, which is part of a Thinet packaged Office suite. This will execute the onFirstSandboxOwner callback function as no other part of this Thinet packaged application is running prior to launching Microsoft Outlook. The user leaves Microsoft Outlook running in the background and then launches Microsoft Word. The onFirstSandboxOwner callback function is not executed as there is already a part of the Thinet package running with Outlook. The example code on this slide shows the mapping of a network drive X to a shared folder on a server. The next callback function is on first parent start. This callback function is executed for each entry point which is launched regardless of how it is launched. The callback function is executed prior to an entry point's defined process being launched. It is not executed for any child process which may launch in the foreground or background while the ThinApp packaged application is running. The difference between the on first parent start and on first sandbox owner callback functions is on first sandbox owner is only launched during initial thin app package execution while on first parent start is launched for each parent or entry point application. The example code shown for this callback function is setting a working directory for the application. Up to this point, we have covered the ThinApp scripted callback functions which execute prior to the ThinApp packaged application launching. We now move into the ThinApp scripted callback functions which execute upon close of ThinApp packaged applications. The first of these callback functions is on first parent exit. This callback function is executed for each parent or entry point upon close of the entry point parent process and is done so regardless of any child process which may have been spawned whether in the foreground or background. The example code shown for this callback function is removing database lock files if left behind. The last of the ThinApp callback functions is on last process exit. This callback function executes once, only after all parent and child processes are closed down, whether they be foreground or background processes. This does not include any auto-started services, as these are handled through a different subroutine within the ThinApp virtual operating system. The example code for this callback function is showing code for unmapping a network drive. As we just discussed the on last process exit callback function and auto started services, it is important to review the timing within a ThinApp packaged application in relation to scripted solutions so one can properly accommodate for when certain things are executed and in what order. Upon initial execution of a ThinApp packaged application, the first thing which occurs is the execution of any non callback function script code. From there, all on first parent sandbox owner callback function script code is executed. Next, all on first parent start callback function script code is executed. Now at this point, the ThinApp package launches any auto start defined services within the ThinApp package. Once these services are started and have returned a code to the virtual operating system denoting they have properly started, the entry point process is launched showing the user the application. From here, the user utilizes the application as needed. When the user closes a ThinApp application, if the application is defined as an entry point or parent, then the on first parent exit callback function is executed. If the application is a child process, in other words, not defined as an entry point, then the on first parent exit callback function is not executed. Aside from auto started services, if the application or entry point being closed happens to be the last process running, then all auto started services are stopped. Once confirmation is received by the virtual operating system, all auto started services and any dependent services are successfully stopped, then the on last process exit callback function is executed. To show an example and demonstration on the timing for each of the ThinApp callback functions, on this slide we see a very simple ThinApp test script with code for each of the callback functions 
as well as outside the callback functions, which utilizes a simple message box for display of when and how each piece of the script is executed when a Thinna package is launched. To demonstrate both the implementation of a script within a ThinNet package, as well as the execution of each callback function and code outside the callback functions, here I've created a sample script with simple message box code to provide visualization of when each part of the script executes. The VBS file can be named as needed but must be placed within the root of the ThinNet project folder in order to be implemented within the ThinNet package at build time. Once the package has been built, a test launch shows the execution of the script. When launching a single entry point, we see the non-callback function code within the script is called first as this is called each time the script is newly accessed. This is followed by the onFirstSandboxOwner callback function code, which is then followed by the onFirstParentStart callback function code. In this scenario, since the application makes a new reference call to the script, the code outside the callback function is executed once more. Because of this, one should ensure any code outside of the ThinApp callback functions is properly validated and works as expected. Additional scripted validation checks may be necessary. Finally, the application is launched. Once the application is closed, we see the onFirstParentExit callback function code executed, followed by the onLastProcessExit callback function code. To demonstrate how this same script is executed when multiple entry points are utilized, when launching the first entry point, we see the same as before where the non callback function code is executed, then on first sandbox owner and on first parent start callback functions executed, followed by a recall of the non callback function code and the application start. When launching the second entry point, we see only the on first parent start callback function is being executed as the sandbox is already locked open by the first application. Upon closing either of the parent applications, we see only the onFirstParentExit callback function executed while other processes are left running within the ThinApp package. In this example, when we close the last parent application, we see both onFirstParentExit and onLastProcessExit callback functions executed. Again, the onLastProcessExit callback function is only executed once all parent and child processes are closed. In this example, as we do not have any child processes left running, the closing of the last parent process tells the ThinApp virtual operating system to execute the onLastProcessExit callback function. While it's generally not recommended to use multiple scripts for simplicity and ease of use reasons, it is possible to do so and there are some scenarios where this may be desirable. In these scenarios, it is extremely important to understand the timing and execution of multiple scripts within a ThinApp package. To show the timing and execution of how multiple scripts work within a single ThinApp package, here we've created four test scripts 0, 1, A, and B VBS files, which utilize the same code as before, except denoting the script being called in each message box. When executing the ThinApp package's entry points, we see the following. Non-callback function code is executed in alphabetical order in the four scripts, 0, 1, A, and B. Callback functions are still called as needed, but in reverse alphabetical order, B, A, 1, then 0 VBS files. This goes for all callback functions.
To provide customers with additional functionalities, the ThinApp scripting engine provides a number of custom application programming interfaces or APIs, which customers may utilize to enhance their ThinApp packages for use in various environments. With these APIs, one can do such things as load library files from external locations, force the shutdown of the ThinApp package, utilize system variables, execute processes in either the native or virtual memory spaces, look up any build option of the ThinApp package, obtain file versioning info on any file, read in the external command line used to launch the ThinApp package, look up the full path of a process, easily determine the OS and version, obtain any system environment variable, programmatically remove the sandbox when the ThinApp package is closed, define any environment variable, define or redefine the file system isolation on any folder, define or redefine the registry isolation on any registry key, and pause while awaiting a process to complete. Finally, we show an example of a more advanced script where, along with various ThinApp API calls, the displayed code utilizes the build date time stamp of the ThinApp package and can both warn the user and expire the application based upon the scripted settings. If the scripted validation determines the ThinApp package is out of date, the script never lets the ThinApp package launch, instead closing it down with a notification to the user. To explain the basic functionality of this script, it is designed to run during startup of a ThinApp package and check the current system date against the modification date of the ThinApp package and compare the difference with both a warning and age limit thresholds defined in the script. In short, it allows an administrator to provide a way to time bomb a ThinApp package. In demonstrating this script, we first need to disable the code which does the actual date calculation and instead enable the test code using a modified date calculation. This allows us to test our script without changing the date and time on the build system. The first demonstration of this script will be to show the user warning when the application is below the warning threshold. Here we set the test code to ensure the script calculates the ThinApp package to an age within the user warning threshold, save the script, and build the package. Upon execution, we see the user receives the warning denoting the ThinApp package is about to expire and the user should contact their administrator for an updated ThinApp package. Upon clicking OK, the application still launches and the user can continue as normal. The second demonstration of this script will be to show the user notice when the ThinApp package has expired. Here, we set the test code to ensure the script calculates the ThinApp package to an age older than the age limit threshold, save the script, and build the ThinApp package. Upon execution, we see the user receives the notification the application has expired. Upon clicking OK, the user is not allowed to run the ThinApp package and the ThinApp package exits without showing any interface. As one can see, there is almost an infinite degree of granularity and configurability within a ThinApp package when utilizing scripts. As we like to say, virtually anything can be scripted, and when it comes to scripting within ThinApp, virtually anything is possible. Thank you for attending this VMware Bootcamp session on scripting within ThinApp.